I would love to present to you what is so close to me that gives me hope. And that name is Jesus Christ. They say, oh, come on, I heard that so many times, Father. I want to give you a concrete three things again that truly grasp my whole being, if you will. The first one, God becomes man, and that man is Jesus. Now, only Christianity, if you will, promoting this, believes in this, that God becomes man. What does it mean God becomes man? Because God loves us so much that God gives us his only son to be with us, to come, and to live like us, but sin. And not to condemn us, but to save us, to give us guidelines, to give us the way, the truth, and life. So we're not just here accidentally, but we know that we are loved as well by God, created out of love. And so this message, this beginning, this original, whatever you call meaning, reality of who we are and God is so awesome. Now, every, every December 25th, we celebrate Christmas, yes? And what do we celebrate? We celebrate the birthday of Jesus, which is 25th of December. And then the next day, nothing else happening. Nothing happens. I think we missed the point because when God becomes man, we celebrate the identity of God and the relationship between God and us. And so today, I would love you to reimagine, redefine, rethink about that incarnation that God becomes man in Jesus Christ. That gives us a lot of hope. That gives us not just hope, but that reveals of who we are between God and us today. Number two, God becomes man so that man might become God or might become divine. This is another hope, and this is blow our mind if you could, we think Superman and Wonder Woman are super, yes? And we praise them and we want to be, might be like them one day. But if we think about it, if we believe that God becomes man so that we might become divine and God here, we are the sonship and daughtership of God, we are children of God, it's much more powerful than Superwoman or Superman. And so, we are so blessed by God every day. And so I'd like you to touch your skin, touch your face, look at yourself in the mirrors, because you're the only person that existing in the whole history of salvation that just you. Everybody is so different and unique and distinct in the whole history of salvation. God created each one of us unique in the likeness and image of God so that we can celebrate our life. So I'd like you to hopefully not just read it, but believe in it, live it, and even tell the person next to you, hey, you are divine. You are God, son, and daughter. The third one, that I'd like to invite you to think about because we Catholic Church tradition, every prayer we end with, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Through Christ, everything comes into being. Through Christ, everything exists. And so let us just grasp to that. Let us believe in our prayer because Jesus said, I live, 
but I will send you the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will show you, will reveal you the truth. What you and I are doing right now, we operate in our, the energy, the goodness of the Holy Spirit. If you could understand me and understand yourself, if we can relate because the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so it's just like, it's just like your smartphone, every smartphone with an airplane mode, you just turn that airplane mode, you will connect with the Wi-Fi of the Holy Spirit, just like that. So we don't have to, we don't have to do anything too hard. The Holy Spirit is around us, within us. We just be open ourselves and willing to allow God, the Holy Spirit, to get in touch with us, to inspire us, to lead us, to love us. And so with these three facts about the incarnation of Jesus Christ, i like to present it to you as a source of my very hope. And I hope that you have the same hope if you claim yourself Christian or Catholic.